So today we're going to be looking at disassembling the vane axial fan on these systems. Let's get started. So we'll start by taking the casing piece off, which is the blue piece here. And if you notice, there's four snaps, two on the front and two on the back. If you reach around to the back of the fan, put your fingers on each one of the back snaps and just push in lightly and upwards, the back of the casing will snap free from the stator. And then the same around the front, push on the two front snaps and you'll be able to disengage the whole casing. So we can set that aside. Okay. So next step is to take the rotor off. And if you notice, there's six fasteners in the hub of the rotor. Those are 5 16 hex. We want to take those six out. Before we do that, it's always a good idea to mark the position of the rotor relative to the motor, just in case we need to put it back on in the same orientation. So if you'll notice, there's actually numbers on the nose of the, uh, the rotor here. They indicate the blade number. So if we just want to mark blade number one relative to the motor position, we can make sure we put it back on exactly the way it came off. I'm just going to do that with a piece of tape here. And then we reach in and we can take out the 5 16 hex. Again, there's six of them that are evenly spaced around the, the hub. So the next step, once the fasteners are all free, now you can just grab on either side of the fan to one of the blades with your thumbs on the, the front of the motor here and pull up gently. It should slide off easily. And once you do that, you'll note uh, you know, the, the six fasteners that we just loosened up. And there's also these three metal retaining rings, uh, independent sections inside the hub of the motor. Those should stay in place for reuse or be retained if you're installing a new rotor. So here you can see one of the, uh, one of the retaining rings uh, with the fasteners out. So there's, again, three segments of that retaining ring uh, evenly spaced around the, the hub of the rotor. We can leave the retaining ring sections in the rotor for reuse. Um, I just took it out to, to demonstrate what it looked like here. So I'll set the rotor aside now. And the next step uh, would be to remove the fan motor from the stator, which in this case, again, we're held in by four uh, 5 16 screws evenly spaced around the perimeter. If we want to take those out, it's important to note here that these fasteners do have thread locking compound on them. Okay, and now the stator is completely free from the motor. Uh, the only thing you need to do is on this side, you'll want to pull the, the rubber cord grommet free from the stator. Push down lightly on the motor wires here. You can see the rubber grommet will slide out of the slotted feature in the stator. Now that the stator is completely free from the motor, we can just lift the stator free and set it aside. So we'll set this right here. Okay, so in the event that we're doing a motor replacement here, we'll demonstrate uh, the removal and reinstallation of the heat shield. So the heat shield is attached with three quarter inch hex fasteners. So those we can just remove. Here you can see the embossments of the, the heat shield that actually rest against the motor when assembled. They give it the standoff distance. Okay, so now we'll cover the reinstallation of a heat shield onto a new motor. Uh, so now here we have our, our new motor. We take our heat shield that we took off of the old motor that was being replaced. If you just line it up again with the embossments pointed down against the motor, line up the three holes. They are thread cutting fasteners. We want them to, to cut the threads back into the aluminum of the motor. Throughout the assembly procedure of the fan, uh, be sure to reference any documented torque specifications, uh, both for the motor and the, the rotor installation.
so in this case, you know, we're, we're reattaching the heat shield to the same motor we took it off of for the purposes of this video. Uh, in the case of installing this onto a new motor uh, where the fasteners have not already been threaded uh, at the factory, it may be easier to use a, a cordless drill or driver you know, to get the thread cutting fastener to cut back into the, the aluminum easier. And it would not necessarily be as easy as what it looks like here, uh, putting the fastener into the pre-threaded hole you know, by hand. Okay, so now we'll demonstrate the removal of the, uh, this flow control ring that you can see is attached to the stator uh, in the event that we need to replace it. So for this, we just flip the stator upside down so that we can gain access to the snaps of the, the back side of the ring. And if you look down inside the stator veins, you can see the, the blue snaps protruding through every, every uh, third vein here. And the easy way to, to disassemble this is to reach down in that vein passage with a pair of needle nose pliers and just kind of gently push the two heads of the snap together and push gently through the, the stator. You won't be able to push it all the way through at once until we work around all seven stations, uh, but that's how you can disengage the snaps. And it helps to hold it up in the air slightly because otherwise the ring will, will hit whatever surface you're working on. Okay, and then once we've uh, disengaged all seven snaps, you can set the stator back down, just grasp the ring, and it'll pull free. So in the event that we need to replace the flow control ring into a new stator or a new ring uh, into an existing stator, you simply line up uh, the seven snap features on the ring and set them down into the little pockets uh, on the leading edge of each one of these veins. If you just gently rest it in place like this, get them all lined up, then you can just push each one down. You should hear them snap through the vein. And then once it's on, just pull upward gently on the ring to make sure it's engaged in each one of the snaps. And once it is, the ring installation is complete. We can talk about removing the, uh, the stator temperature limit switch here. So in the event that we need to replace this, it's held in by two 5 16th sheet metal screws. If we just want to remove those two fasteners, the uh, thermal overload assembly comes out, and then we could put a new switch back in the existing stator. In this case, uh, the threaded holes are already cut uh, from the factory. In the event that you're putting a, a thermal overload switch in a new stator, you will have to cut the threads uh, with the sheet metal screw into the aluminum manually. So, go ahead and, and reinstall the switch. Okay, so if you just set the switch through the opening of the stator, And again, if you're, if you're putting these screws into a, a new stator, they'll go a little bit harder because you actually need to, uh, need to cut the, the threads for the first time. Uh, but it is just a sheet metal screw, so it should cut fairly easily. Okay. So now let's take a look at reassembling the vein axial fan uh, from a motor replacement up. So we take our, our motor with the heat shield now reattached and just set it right side up on the heat shield on a stable surface. Ideally, if the cords are off uh, kind of to the 7 o'clock position here, that'll be ideal because that'll be where the stator wants to be aligned with it. And then you'll notice uh, on the motor, there's a, a rectangular keying feature on the hub of the motor that wants to be aligned with the same feature in the hub of the stator. That's what, what rotationally clocks the two together. So with the motor on a stable surface, we can just pick the stator up, set this on, and again, just, just line up that key feature. 
and then take the four hex fasteners and just start them into the pre-threaded holes in the motor. Okay, and then the final step is to uh, fish the cord grommet back through the slot in the stator here. So you'll notice the cord grommet has a, a split ring on it. You just want to slide that on your cord until the grommets align with the slot in the stator and just gently push upward and it should, uh, it should feed itself into the stator. Okay, and then the next step is to reinstall the rotor. Now if you're, if you're putting, for whatever reason, uh, the same exact rotor on the same exact motor, uh, during the process you can reuse the rotor and you just line that rotor up with the mark uh, that we marked for the particular blade one just to get the orientation right. If you've replaced a motor or a rotor, uh, we have here a sample just to show the difference. Uh, in the installation. In this case there is no uh, rotational directivity that needs to be aligned because it's a new rotor. The only reason we keep it aligned is for balance purposes if we're if we're putting a rotor back on an existing motor. But if you're installing a new rotor you simply set it on the nose of the motor and then it's best to drop a pin or other alignment uh, you know alignment pin or a, a hex, uh, hex wrench or screwdriver through one of the holes in the, the fan rotor down into the motor. So I demonstrate that here. Um, the reason for that is to ensure that the, the fastener holes are aligned as you press the two together. Uh, so usually it's easy to do that with the fan rotor slightly off, just so you can see what you're doing here. So if I put my screwdriver through this hole in the fan rotor and align it with one of the holes in the motor, Then when I go to press the fan rotor on, that will ensure that my, uh, my line, hole is still lined up. In this case, it's easy usually to grab the, the shroud of the rotor and just gently pull down, like so. And then the screwdriver has kept the fasteners aligned for us. Take the screwdriver out or whatever other alignment mechanism you used. And then in this case, we'll take the uh, the retaining ring out of the old rotor and all the fasteners and put them in the new one. Set the old rotor aside. So it does not matter where the, uh, the retaining rings go. You can drop the first one wherever you want. The next ones just have to make sure that they don't overlap the first one you put in. So after you drop all three in, if you look down in, you should see a small gap between the three segments just to ensure there's no overlap. Nice. And then there's six fasteners that go in, in groups of two. The position of the fasteners are defined by the holes, of course, in the retaining ring that you just dropped in. So these you can just kind of fish in with your finger, or if you have a magnetic nut driver, that works best. and we just briefly start each one of them. Uh, the pattern in which these are inserted and, and tightened is not critical. They don't have to be uh, you know, tightened around uh, in a star pattern or anything like that. That's not critical. You can just go around the circumference if you want. And usually it's easiest to hold onto the shroud of the rotor to keep it from spinning while you tighten these up. down. And that finishes the installation of the rotor. And then the final step after the rotor's on is just to reinstall the rotor casing. Uh, so we grab the, the blue casing and again there's four snap features on the casing evenly spaced around the perimeter. 
you just want to align those with the four rectangular pockets and if you just set two of the snaps in place on the front you can actually just set and wiggle the casing down so that all four are seated if you then just press lightly on the top of the casing you'll hear the front two snap and then the back two snap and again you just want to pull up gently at each snap location to ensure all four of them are, are snapped in place and then the final check is just to spin the fan by hand to make sure that there's no rubbing that occurs at the casing and the front of the shroud if there is I uh, just need to go back and check the fitment of the the fan rotor on the motor but if everything was installed correctly there should be no no rubbing and there should be a, a clear gap between the two pieces here. Okay, so there you have it. That covers the disassembly and reassembly of the vane axial fan system.